Hello you guys. Um, I wanted to start a baking series on this channel for quite some time. And today we're going to start off with something very simple. And I'm using this beautiful machine over here to make it. Now, I'm going to be making a standard white bread with the KitchenAid. It's more like an Amish bread. I know that's kind of weird to say Amish and KitchenAid anywhere in the same sentence. But you can do everything by hand also. And I'll kind of give some tips as we go through. It's very minimal um, effort. It doesn't take long to make. You do have to let it rest for a little while. You're going to need your oven set at 350 degrees. And let's get started. Okay, so the ingredients are super um, simple. You're going to need two cups of warm water. I'll talk more about that in a second. You're going to need one-third cup of sugar. You're also going to need one and a half tablespoons of active dry yeast. I'm using the platinum brand. You're also going to need one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. A fourth of cup of canola or vegetable oil, and I am just using vegetable. And you're also going to need five to six cups of bread flour. I'm just using the Pillsbury. You can find it in, in your local um, grocery stores. Okay, so I have added the one and a half tablespoons of the active dry yeast. That is one and a half packs. And you're going to add one teaspoon of sugar to that. Right in. And then you're going to add about a fourth of that really warm water. Um, you're going to stir it. I'm just using my one of my favorite little whisks. Give it all a stir and you're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes until it doubles in size. Now with the hot water, I find that, yes, you can microwave it um, and hope it stays warm. But I do it, I kind of break it up. This calls for a fourth of a cup of hot water. So I pour out a fourth of a cup from my two cups and then microwave that. Okay, so we'll let that double in size and we will get the flour mixture going. Okay, now that the yeast have sat for about 10 minutes, kind of foamed up and doubled in size, you're going to add your dough hook to your KitchenAid and add four cups of the bread flour. I'm going to lift it up. I might have to change the camera once I do this. There we go. You're going to turn it on one. And then you're going to add the sugar, the rest of the sugar. You're going to add the salt. You're just going to kind of mix that up for about one minute. Make sure it's all mixed up together. These little bowls are so handy. My mom got them for me. They come in all different measurements. I love them. Thank you, Mom. Then you're going to add in the rest of your warm water. I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. Keeping the speed on one. And if you're doing this by hand, you start adding in the water and kneading it. Everything the mixer is doing, you need to do with your hands, and it's going to take you probably double the time. You're going to add your oil. Right on in. And then you're going to add your yeast. Okay, you're going to turn it up to two. That little hook fell in that goes on the very top of the mixer. It always comes off. Once I started using that little spot to grind meat or make pasta, it never stays on anymore. Um, you're going to mix it. And then you're going to turn it off and scrape down the sides. Just to make sure it all gets incorporated. I'm 
turning it up to four and just mixing it. Scraping down the side again. Okay, and now you're going to start to add the rest of the flour. Now, I'm probably going to use about a cup and a half. This is one cup. I'm just going to sprinkle some in, turn it on one, and keep sprinkling. Sorry if my hand is in the way. A little bit at a time. That's the one cup. I'll probably do about a half cup more. You're going to turn it up and let it mix. Probably about two minutes. I'm going to turn it up a little more. Four is about right. Actually, I'm sorry. It's two. half cup more flour and sprinkle it in. And I'm going to turn it up to four. It's going to be loud. making sure to get all that flour incorporated into that dough. Turn it back on. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit faster just to really get it kneaded in together. If you're doing this by hand, it's going to take you a while, so just keep kneading the bread until you get a very smooth but sticky kind of feel to it that kind of clings together. Don't incorporate too much flour while you're doing that. See, it's all coming together. I don't even think I need to add any more flour. I think the four cups was pretty good coming together beautifully. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Thank you, Jesus, for the KitchenAid. I'm telling you what. I think a lot of people just use them during the holidays. Actually, I am going to add about a half cup more flour. Okay, I added a little more. I'm going to turn it up again. And now up a little higher. As I was saying, I think a lot of people put up their KitchenAids till the holidays and, you know, don't really get them out. Well, this is a super easy bread that you can make at home with this handy machine and you can make it by hand too. There are days I've made it by hand just because, you know, I wanted to feel the bread, touch the bread, but, you know, in our family, it's trying to get things done and get it done kind of in a hurry. Seems like everything around here is always in a hurry and we have to get things done um, pretty quick. It's coming together real nice again. You don't want to over mix it. At this point, it is pretty much just sticking to the dough hook and it is done. So, I'm going to take it out. The dough hook that is. 
Okay, I removed the dough hook. The dough is beautiful. Um, sorry if the lighting isn't perfect in here. Now, you can use olive oil, you can use canola oil, vegetable oil, or you can just use some like oil in a can. This is the Crisco one. You need to spray each side of the dough so it doesn't stick. Turn it over and spray the other side. Okay, I've sprayed both sides. I'm going to take this pretty little towel and put it over it and just let it rise for about an hour. So it will double in size and um, be ready to punch down and then bake. So um, it will have one more um, rising process in the pans and then um, it will go into the oven and it will be delicious. Okay, the dough has doubled in size and we're going to punch that dough down just like that and turn it out on a floured surface. I just have some of the cake flour out here on the landing. Okay. And all you're going to do is separate it into two pieces. I'm going to use my bench scraper. This is specifically for dough. It works great just to cut it. And you're just going to let it sit for 10 minutes. I'm going to cover it up and let it rest. I'm going back to my trusty towel. 10 minutes. Okay, the dough has been sitting for 10 minutes. We're going to take the towel off. And the first thing I'm going to do is spray my pans. I'm going to use a non-stick spray. Spray them really good. And then I'm going to take one loaf and kind of work it into a loaf shape. I'm going to kind of roll it. Make sure it doesn't stick. It's so soft. It feels amazing. I mean, there is therapy. This is why I went to cooking school was because of how wonderful it is to get in the kitchen and bake. And things have been going absolutely shit house crazy in my house. Okay, you're going to kind of make it about the length of the pan. Take it and put it in. Seam side down. Tuck your ends under. Make it nice and neat inside the pan. And getting, anyway, things have been going crazy around my house. And uh, it feels good to get in the kitchen and not think about nothing except baking. It's kind of like therapy. And there that is. You can do the same to the next one. They're so soft. Just need it a very little bit just to work it. And then you're going to roll it over and kind of make it come together. And turn it. Shape it into the loaf. Make it again about as long as your pan it up and put it in. Now you're going to let it rise in the cake pan, or cake pan, what did I just say? You're going to let it rise in the pans and in the bread pans and um, I like to cover it, but you don't have to, but I like to cover it anyway just to make sure there's no cat here or nothing gets in it in my house and um, we'll come back um, in about 30 minutes and put these in the oven. Remember to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. They're going to bake for about 30 to 40 minutes and um, right before they're done I'll put some butter on the top of them in the oven. So I'm going to clean up around here and let those rise. I put the um, bread on the um, oven door. I opened it. It's at 350 degrees. I'm just going to leave it here for a few minutes because, you know, you really want a warm area for that bread to rise. So that is exactly why I have it open. And um, I will take the towel off a few minutes um, and let it just rise up on its own. 
Okay, I have two big, beautiful loaves of bread. I'm going to slice them up and enjoy them. I took them out of the pans. They came out super easy, and they look delicious. It's really delicious and pretty, and I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. Yummy, yum. let me know if you try this. Check out my blog at kjaggers.com for more pictures. I'll talk to you guys really soon. Bye-bye.